Hey, it's Adrian, and here are Samsung's two newest flagship phones, the Z Fold 4 and the S23 Ultra. Now, two completely different form factors, and as a result, people are usually pretty planted in which they prefer best for day-to-day -day use. So I wanna take a look at both phones in a couple of areas, and then you guys let me know which you would pick for your daily driver. The phones feel great in the hand. They feel sturdy, reliable, really premium feeling phones. Now, in terms of hand feel, I do prefer the hand feel on the S23 Ultra. It just feels more balanced and more natural to me. Now with the Z Fold 4, it's a little bit more top heavy, I find. Another difference between both phones is that on the Z Fold 4, the power button doubles as the fingerprint scanner, but on the S23 Ultra, it uses an under screen fingerprint scanner. And looking at the camera modules, you can see that the Z Fold 4 is missing that 10X optical lens. The S23 Ultra also has the S Pen nicely housed in the body, but the Z Fold 4 does not. There's also the crease to talk about, and either it bothers you or it doesn't bother you, and it doesn't really bother me that much. I know specs are boring, guys, but stick with me. So the S23 Ultra has a newer processor, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. It also has an Adreno 740, and it also has UFS 4.0 storage, so basically beats the Z Fold 4 in all those areas. The big thing though is there's a 200 main megapixel camera with the f1.7 aperture, so that's better in low light situations. You can also do 8K at 30 frames per second. It also has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery compared to the Z Fold 4's 4,400 milliamp hour battery, and it also has faster charging as well. All right, let's talk cameras, and the S23 Ultra is the clear winner when it comes to cameras. Not only does it have that new 200 megapixel shooter, but it also has an f1.7 aperture, so it lets more light in, so it's just better low light performance. Maybe there's not enough of a difference to you, especially if you don't do a lot of low light photography to really warrant you know, the use of an S23 Ultra. But for me, this just covers pretty much every type of shooting situation. You can go ultra wide, all the way into telephoto if you want. And with this, you're really capped. The other thing you can do with the S23 Ultra is that you can now shoot 8K 30 with this phone. Let's take a look at the photo quality coming out of both of these phones and discuss a couple areas where this does have the edge when it comes to the camera experience. The S23 Ultra's camera setup allows me to go from ultra wide to wide to 3X optical and finally 10X optical while retaining you know, a lot of detail, sharpness, and clarity. The Z Fold 4 allows me to go from ultra wide to wide and then it caps out at a 3x optical zoom now if i want to go in any deeper than that i have to use digital zoom and the results are just not that great looking at both of these photos the photo on the left from the s23 ultra definitely looks more lively more saturated more vibrant and the z fold 4 on the right it just looks a bit more muted even though it's a brighter exposed image it the colors are just kind of lacking so let's go in and take a look at this produce sign here. And if I do the same thing on the Z Fold 4, you can see that it's not as clear, number one, but the colors are also not as vibrant and saturated. And if we look at the fruit as well, again, the fruit here just looks way more appetizing, way more appealing. Now, if I go ahead and I zoom in all the way, the highest I can go, let's see, that's about 500%. Uh, percent. I can kind of read, make out some of this, you know, credit card, mobile payments only. If I do the same on the Z Fold 4, let's go into about 500%. And you could see that it's you know way less noticeable or you can make out way less details on here. And of course, that's due to the 200 megapixel count on here. In this example, we can see that the S23 Ultra continues the trend of really saturating the colors. And if we look at the Z Fold 4, there's less saturation in the colors and the Z Fold 4 is actually doing a better job of recreating how the menu items actually looked on the plate. The S23 Ultra is exposing this image with what seems to be a little bit of a color cast. You can see that the image is a bit darker. And when we look at the Z Fold 4 on the right, the image just looks overall brighter. You can see that I can actually tell this is a door handle here. It's just kind of blown out. You can't really see many details. Same with the license plate. It's immediately uh, legible on here, the S23 Ultra, but it isn't on the Z Fold 4. Now, if we take a look at these lights in the corner here, again, you could see, I could tell that there's a bit of a, like a brass or a copper type of color here, but on the Z Fold 4, it just looks all white. So there's definitely more detail being retained in the S23. Both phones are wonderful with taking selfies, so I tried to do something a bit more challenging. I took a backlit photo and you could see on the left, the S23 Ultra is doing a better job of retaining natural colors than the Z Fold 4. While I prefer the camera lens that are available on the S23 Ultra, the Z Fold 4 does excel in a couple of areas. So one is obviously 
this much larger screen allows you to better frame shots and tell if something is in focus or not. The other thing that you can do is you can just activate a live review of the photos you're taking. So as soon as I take that, I can go ahead and see, you know, the real photo populated and I can take a look at, you know, the color focus, if I got it framed exactly how I wanted. And I don't have to go into the gallery, take a look at it back out into the camera app and continue. And that's something that you don't really have with the S23 Ultra. Another area where the Z Fold 4 dominates is with selfies. So say you wanna take a high resolution selfie or a high resolution group photo, you can go ahead and activate the cover screen preview. And that allows you to use these rear cameras, which are a much higher megapixel count. And at the same time, you could see whatever you're taking a photo of on that cover screen. This would also be handy if you're gonna shoot a vlog or a video because obviously you could use the high megapixel video cameras and have that live preview while you're talking. All right, let's talk about the screen since that's the standout factor on both of these phones. And when it comes to productivity, the Z Fold 4 is the absolute winner. Let me explain why. It's immediately apparent why the Z Fold 4 is just the productivity master. You could see I have both of the same apps open on both phones and there's just way more information that I'm seeing on the Z Fold 4. I can also have both apps split vertically so I can have way more information at a glance. Again, it's something the S23 Ultra just can't Match. How about if I want to have three apps open at the same time? How about four apps or even five apps? You can also make changes quicker on the Z Fold 4. So you can see I can easily cycle through the main menu and access the sub menu. But on the S23 Ultra, I have to go into the main menu, then tap a sub menu to go in, then back out again. Right now, the crease is going down vertically here. So I've opened the fold up and it's full screen. Now, if I measure from the edge of the screen here, you can see that I'm about five and a half inches diagonally. And I'm gonna do the same measurement on here. So from the bottom of the screen, say to the end, you can see it's a little over five and a half inches diagonally. So the screen on here is actually larger when you have both of these phones in this type of orientation. Where you get the edge on the Z Fold 4 is once you rotate the phone so that it's in a more landscape orientation. So you can see now it fills up way more of the screen. We have way more narrower top and bottom bars or horizontal bars. And now if I take a measurement from here, it is now a little over six and a half inches. So you can see that dominates what the S23 Ultra is capable of. When we're not talking about full screen video, of course the Z Fold 4 has the edge again because you can see when I'm on Instagram or YouTube, I can just see way more content at a glance because the entire screen is populated. So yeah, you could see that the Z Fold 4 is the productivity and efficiency master pretty much any way you look at it. However, there is one downside to this phone for me, and it's because I don't find myself actually opening the phone to use this inner screen as much as I thought I would when I got it. And an example would be, say I'm at the grocery store in line, or I'm just waiting for someone to get in the car, for example, you know, I don't wanna open the inner screen, get invested into all of that. I'd rather just, you know, pull this out of my pocket really quickly, you know, check a text, check the weather, whatever, read some news and then put it away really quickly. And that means I'm using the cover screen way more than I initially thought. And because of that, I'm just finding the cover screen a little bit too narrow. And then once you put a case on, it's even narrower than that. Now, you can say that's my fault because I'm not using the phone to its full potential. And you're right, that is my fault. But that's just one of the things that I wanted to highlight is that, you know, I did read a lot of comments or a good handful of comments from people where they actually returned their Z Fold 4 and went back to the S23 Ultra because they just found that they weren't utilizing this inner screen as much as they thought they would. When it came to overall performance, I definitely had better scores on the S23 Ultra over the Z Fold 4 in Geekbench and 3D Mark. But when that came to actual real world use and I played Call of Duty Mobile, both phones seemed very fluid. I couldn't tell a difference in terms of sluggishness or smoothness. They were both very fluid when playing. But the S23 Ultra was a few degrees cooler, on average about, I would say, one to two degrees cooler than on the Z Fold 4. But again, that's not really a big deal. The S23 Ultra comes out on top again in the 3D Mark Wild Type Extreme Test. So the overall score, you could see it's about a thousand points higher than on the Z Fold 4 as well. If we look at the average frames per second, it's 23 on the S23 Ultra. And if we round up on the Z Fold 4, 17 frames per second, so that's a six frames per second difference between both phones. Take note of the higher core speeds on the S23 Ultra when compared to the Z Fold 4. 
in two of the clusters. If you're gonna be doing a lot of gaming, you may prefer the screen on the Z Fold 4 just because it's larger and that's at the crease doesn't bother you. Now, one thing I did find on the S23 Ultra is I did prefer it because of the glass screen. I could slide my fingers more easily on glass than I could on this kind of, you know, plastic type of screen. And I do have kind of oily fingerprints, so it becomes an issue if I game for a long period of time, but on here it's much less noticeable. Both phones are very fluid and snappy, and I don't think anyone is gonna be able to tell that there's a difference between both CPUs on the phone, they're both very responsive. By the way guys, if you're finding this video interesting, please consider liking and subscribing, but let's get back into the rest of it. The S23 Ultra is the clear winner when it comes to battery life because the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is really not a marketing hype, that thing really delivers, but let me explain more. The S23 Ultra is definitely the winner when it comes to battery life. Now, that's not because of the 5,000 milliamp hour battery life that it comes with when compared to the 4,400 milliamp hour on the Z Fold 4. Actually, if you take a look at the YouTube app here, I played the YouTube app on the front screen of the S23 Ultra and I played it on the cover screen of the Z Fold 4. So I didn't play it on this inner screen. And even though the Z Fold 4 is powering a much smaller front screen, you know, it's outputting, you know, the same amount of brightness, but the smaller screen area, it's actually using 1.2% more battery life than on the S23 Ultra in the same time period, you know, 20 minutes in the app. So you can see that it's definitely more efficient on the S23 Ultra. Now, if we take a look at Twitch, it was the same thing. I played Twitch on the front screen of the S23 Ultra. I mean, there is only one screen. And I played it on the cover screen on the Z Fold 4. And again, the difference is not as big as on YouTube, but you could see in the same eight minutes, both were active, that there's about a 0.4% difference with Twitch. If we look at Prime Video, this is the only app where I use the inner screen on the Z Fold 4, so it was, you know, the full size. Now, they were both open for 12 minutes and you could see that the Z Fold 4 is using 0.8% more battery power. And I mean, that makes sense. It's powering a larger screen. But in general, if we just take a look at this small sample of, you know, app usage in terms of battery life. The S23 Ultra is definitely gonna outlast the Z Fold 4 and both of these phones started at 100% and you could see that there is a 5% difference right now between the two. So clear winner, S23 Ultra. If you think the battery life difference is kind of minor between both of these phones, consider if you're gonna be using this mixed use or you're gonna be using this inner screen most of the time, the battery just has to power a much larger display than on the S23 Ultra, and this is gonna jump ahead even more in battery life. On paper, the S23 is supposed to be a little bit louder, but let's test that out. The S23 Ultra is definitely louder than the Z Fold 4. However, I think I kind of prefer the sound on the Z Fold 4 a little bit more because it sounds a bit more fuller because of the speaker grill. So you could see on the S23 Ultra, it's a much smaller grill. And on the Z Fold 4, it's about double the width. All right, let's talk about the S Pen and you either use it or you don't and you don't care about it. But I actually do use the S Pen and I find it so handy having it in the body of the S23 Ultra anytime I wanna use it. It's so handy to have the S Pen because you could just remotely trigger the camera anytime you need to. And you can also do burst shots. As well, you can use it to remotely trigger the video recording and to stop it. So for me to really consider the Z Fold 4 as my primary phone, like I would like for them to house the S Pen in here. It has to be an ultra slim S Pen, or if they have to make this a little bit wider or a little bit thicker, I'm okay with that. Because if I could have the pen, if I could have the 10X optical zoom, I mean, this would be pretty much unbeatable by any of the Ultra phones. When it came to unlocking both phones, I found the Z Fold 4 to be a little bit faster than the S23 Ultra's underscreen fingerprint scanner. And I don't have a screen protector applied to this, so that wasn't really a factor. This is just quicker, and I actually prefer having the fingerprint scanner in the power button versus underscreen. One thing I noticed was that when I was looking for accessories for the Z Fold 4, it was a little bit more challenging because there were fewer options. Obviously, when you have a phone like this or an iPhone, any type of traditional slap phone, the accessories work pretty much interchangeably, but because this is such a thick phone, and once you add a case that it, it becomes even thicker, it was more challenging to find accessories. Obviously that's something that's gonna change and options will become you know, more plentiful for foldables because they are gaining popularity. All right guys, so those are my thoughts on the S23 Ultra versus the Z Fold 4. 
And I personally prefer the S23 Ultra and I'm a bit biased. Um, I do like having a 10X optical zoom. I do like having an S Pen and I just prefer the hand feel of this. Now that's not to say that the Z Fold 4 is bad in any way. This phone has served me excellently, you know, until I got the S23 Ultra. And the ability to go from this, you know, to this in about a second just can't be beat. Also the ability to split screen apps two ways, three ways, four ways, um, it's something the S22, S23 Ultra, any of the Ultra series phones can't beat. The photo taking experience is also better on this. Of course, you can frame better, you can check focus easily, and you can see, you know, live photos as you take them. So there's a lot going for this phone. So yeah, guys, I'm interested in hearing what you have to say about both of these phones. Obviously, you know, everyone's usage habits and needs are a bit different, and this is a fantastic phone. But for the way I use the phone day to day, um, this just makes more sense for me. All right, guys, if you found this video helpful, please consider liking it, subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one soon.